again to all. So I hope you are still awake and able to watch the continuation of our second topic no? on the physical examination of the head and the neck. So, again, let me present this slide. Okay, so this video or presentation is again the continuation of our physical examination, but the focus is on the neck. So again, these are the learning objectives of this uh, presentation. Okay, the anatomy and physiology of the neck. So for us to be able to identify problems and describe it well, we need to divide each sides of the neck into two triangles. Okay, we have the anterior triangle and the posterior triangle. The anterior triangle, this is where the mandible is just above the triangle. And the sternocleidomastoid muscle is located laterally. Okay. Yeah. And then the midline of the neck is medially. Okay. And then for the posterior triangle, okay, the sternocleidomastoid muscle, uh, merong trabecious muscle, okay, so malapit siya doon. And then the clavicle. To continue with the anatomy and physiology of the neck, we have the great vessels. So just under the sternocleidomastoid muscle, we have the great vessels of the neck. The carotid artery, which is this one. The internal jugular vein. Okay. okay, the external jugular vein that passes diagonally over the surface of the sternocleidomastoid muscle. So, it is helpful when you try to identify the jugular venous pressure. So, gagawin natin yan later in the physical examination. Okay. okay, so this slide shows the midline structures and the thyroid. Okay, so now we have to identify the following structures. No, we have the hyoid bone. Okay, this is just below the mandible. The thyroid cartilage. Okay, the cricoid cartilage. The tracheal rings, yeah, yung tracheal rings, okay, and the thyroid gland, okay, yeah, yung ating thyroid gland, okay. So the isthmus or the thyroid isthmus and the thyroid gland. Uh, lies across the trachea. Okay, this is the trachea. Just below the cricoid cartilage. So, nandiyan ang ating uh, isthmus of the thyroid gland. Okay, okay now moving on to the lymph nodes. Okay, so lymph nodes is part of your lymphatic system, no? which is part of the immune system. Its function is to detect and eliminate foreign substances. So one part of the lymph system is the head and the neck. Okay, so as a nurse, 
we need to be aware of the lineage pattern no kung as, kung nasaan yung mga locations ng ating lymph nodes lalo na later no pagka nag-assess na tayo ng ating lymph nodes okay here this is the submental okay yung mga green na yan yan yung ating lymph nodes the submental the submandibular okay the tonsillar the preauricular lymph node, the posterior auricular lymph nodes, at the back is the occipital lymph nodes, the superior cervical lymph nodes, okay, now these are the deep cervical chain, okay, this is the posterior cervical lymph node, and the supraclavicular lymph node. You need to memorize all of these lymph nodes, especially when we are doing the physical examination in your related learning experiences. Okay, moving on to the health history of the neck. Uh, we have to take note of the common or concerning symptoms. Take note that Knowledge of the lymphatic system is very important to a thorough assessment. Whenever you found a malignant or inflammatory lesions that you have observed during your uh, assessment on the skin, okay, you have to note for the swollen lymph nodes or neck lumps. Okay, tignan natin kung ano yung possible causes of this a lymph nodes, no? Pag-aralan natin later in the next slides kung ano yung um, mga related uh, diseases kapag merong particular na uh, swollen lymph nodes. Also, observe for the enlargement of the thyroid gland or presence of hoarseness. So, enlargement of the lymph nodes commonly accompany pharyngitis, okay? Uh, enlargement of the thyroid gland, usually uh, there is a thyroid function may increase or decrease or could be normal. So, pwede rin may temperature intolerance, okay? Pag too cold, it suggests hypothyroidism. Pag meron siyang intolerance to too hot, okay, suggest hyperthyroidism. Okay, so let us compare the symptoms of those who have hyperthyroidism and to those who have uh, hypothyroidism. So, for hyperthyroidism, they have nervousness, weight loss, excessive sweating, heat intolerance, there is palpitations, okay, frequent bowel movement, and proximal muscular weakness and tremor. On the other hand, the symptoms for those who have or diagnosed with hypothyroidism, they have fatigue, liturgy, modest weight gain with anorexia, dry, coarse skin, cold intolerance naman sila, opposite to those who have hyperthyroidism. There is swelling of the face, hands, and legs. Okay, there is constipation. So again, opposite naman sa my hyperthyroidism. There is weakness, muscle cramps, joint pains or arthralgias, paresthesias, or Ibig sabihin ng palestisya is, or it refers to a burning or prickling sensation that is usually felt in the hands, the arms, the legs, or feet. But it can also appear in other parts of the body. Okay, there is impaired memory and hearing. So, pag nakita nyo tong Hyperthyroidism, usually mapapayat sila at medyo mataba naman si hypothyroidism. Okay, so let us compare the signs or the objective data of the patient with hyperthyroidism versus a uh, patient with hypothyroidism. So upon assessment, okay, upon palpation, uh, you can feel warm, smooth, moist skin. 
Okay? Staring, a lid lag, meron silang exoptalmus. There is increased systolic or decreased diastolic blood pressure. There is a tachycardia or atrial fibrillation. Okay? Or increased heart rate. Okay, hyperdynamic cardiac pulsations, there is tremor, and proximal muscle weakness. On the other hand, for those who have hypothyroidism, when you palpate their skin, are usually dry, coarse, full skin, yellowish, non-pitting edema, loss of hair, there is periorbital puffness, Decrease ang kanilang systolic and increase diastolic blood pressure. There is bradycardia, okay, below normal or mababa ang heart rate. And hypothermia, intensity of the heart sounds when you auscultate, impaired in memory, mixed hearing loss, and somnolence. Okay, so somnolence means uh, sleepiness or the state of feeling drowsy, no? Parang antokin, yeah, ready to fall asleep. Okay, so with that, let's move on to the physical examination. In doing the physical examination of the neck, you need the following equipment. Tangential light, a cup of water, Para mamaya, when you check the thyroid or the trachea, okay, the stethoscope. Remember also to consider the cultural views when examining of the neck. Ask the patient to remove items from the hair. Okay. So, observe or uh, inspect the hair. No? Note the quantity. Okay, so konti na lang ba yung hair, thick, thickness, the distribution, is it evenly distributed, the texture, is it dry, coarse, yan, and the pattern of loss. Diba, na-mention na natin yan in the previous uh, topic in the integumentary system. Okay, kung ano yung uh, pattern of loss, is it alopecia, and etc. Uh, for fine hair, um, this is common or seen in the patient with hyperthyroidism. So, you can observe coarse hair for patient with hypothyroidism. Okay, so, there is needs, no? Re that refers to tiny white ovoid granules. Okay, there are eggs of lice. Okay, you have to observe for that. Okay. Then check for the scalp. Yeah. Scaliness, is there lumps, nevi, and other lesions? Okay. Redness or scaling. Uh, maybe uh, due to seborrheic dermatitis or psoriasis. Okay. So, Lumps refers to pillar cyst or pigmented nevi. Okay, so part of uh, physical examination of the head and the neck, you have also to check or assess the skull. Okay, note for the general size and the contour. Okay, is the size normal for the client's age? Okay, so is there presence of macrocephaly or the diameter or the size of the head is larger than the normal size? Or is there presence of microcephaly? It is smaller than the normal size of the head. Okay. Itong microcephaly, nakikita natin ito sa mga patient, no? Dati yung um, kapag nanganak yung women na affected ng Zika virus from mosquitoes. Yung macrocephaly naman, nakikita natin to those who have hydrocephalus. Okay. Note for deformities. Meron bang deform ba? Pantay ba yung skull? 
Okay? Is there uh, deformation or deformities? Depressions? Is there lumps? Tenderness? May pain kapag hinawakan? And then learn to recognize irregularities. Okay? Especially the suture lines. So, alam nyo na yung mga regions of the head. Okay? Okay, so moving on to the physical examination of the face as part of our assessment on the head and neck. So note for the facial expression, you can ask the client to smile, to frown, to uh, puff the cheeks, to raise the eyebrows, okay? And then check for the contours of the face. Is it symmetrical? Is there involuntary movement? Bigla na lang nanginginda. Is there presence of edema? Okay, meron ba ang puffiness of the cheek? Is there presence of masses? Ayan. Okay, so this is an example of abnormalities or abnormal findings of the face. Especially for those who have Cushing syndrome. There is a red cheeks, merong hirsutism, or mga hairs, no? Moon face, yan, hirsutism. May mga hairs yung face na kahit siya ay female, yan. Cushing syndrome is a disorder that occurs when the body makes too much cortisol. Okay, over a long period of time. So, we know that cortisol is the stress hormones. Okay, it helps your body to respond to stress. Another abnormality or abnormal findings of the face is the nephrotic syndrome. Okay, so nephrotic syndrome is a group of uh, symptoms that indicate that the kidneys are not working properly. So you can observe a periorbital edema, a puffy, pale face, and the lips may be swollen. Okay, so another abnormality or abnormal findings of the face is the mixed edema, which is another term for severely advanced hypothyroidism. This condition occurs when the body doesn't produce enough uh, thyroid hormones. And these are the manifestation or the signs. No, There is dry hair, pores, and sparse. So the lateral eyebrows are thin. Okay. There is presence of periorbital edema. So, nakikita nyo yung kanyang uh, mata, no? There is puff or puffy dull face with dry skin. Okay. And another is the parotid gland enlargement. So, meron din swelling yung face. Alright. Okay, so another abnormality of the face, uh, we have acromegaly. Um, this condition occurs when there is, or when the body produces too much uh, growth hormones. So if there is too much growth hormones among adults, this will cause um, increase or enlargement of the size in the bones, in the cartilage, in the body organs, and tissues. So, the patient with acromegaly has a bro prominent brow, enlarged soft tissues of the face, and there is prominent jaw. Okay. So, another abnormality is the Parkinson's disease. So, Parkinson's disease is... Um, Brain disorder, okay? It is a brain disorder and it has a black stare as you can see in this picture and there is decreased mobility, okay? Or masking, masking face. Okay, so in doing the physical examination of the head and the neck, you have to observe for the color, Okay, kung uniform ba yung color, 
Okay, at nakadepende sa genes or the race of the person. Okay, pigmentation. Okay, the presence of melanin, carotene, oxyhemoglobin, deoxyhemoglobin. The texture, is it soft? Okay, rough. The thickness, especially on the hair. Or the hair distribution, is it evenly distributed? Or there is a hair loss. Okay. Observe also for acne and hirsutism. So, hirsutism is a condition in women that results in excessive growth of dark or coarse hair in a male like pattern. Okay. Especially, or it can be observed in the face, in the chest, in the back. Okay. So, Assess also for the skin. Okay, skin. Can you check then natin? The scalp. Okay, the skin of the face. Of course, the neck. Is it symmetrical? Especially the skull. Okay. Symmetrical ba yung movement ng face? Or baka pag pinag sabihin mo sa kanya, can you move your eyebrows? Okay, can you close your eyes? Uh, hindi na close both ng eyes. Okay. Uh, yung sa thyroid ba? Symmetrical din? Okay. Is there masses or scars? Is there enlargement of the glands, particularly the thyroid gland? Is there any visible lymph nodes? Okay. Diba you have to start, you have to memorize all the lymph nodes. Okay. Okay. So... In doing the physical examination of the lymph nodes, you have to palpate the lymph nodes with the patient in relaxed position and you have to ask the client to flex the neck, okay? And follow the following sequence. You have to start from the preauricular, posterior auricular, occipital, tonsillar, submandibular, submental, Superficial cervical, posterior cervical, the deep cervical chain, and the supraclavicular. Okay. Asan ba yung mga yan? Okay. So, let us locate this um, lymph nodes in the next slide. Okay. So, this image uh, show the sequence in doing the palpation of the lymph nodes. Okay, you have to remember that the lymph nodes are not palpable. No? So, you, it is important for us to really palpate it for us to determine if there is enlargement or tenderness of the lymph nodes. Okay, the blue color is the internal lymphatic drainage from the mouth and the throat, while the red color are the external lymphatic drainage. Okay, so you have to start from here. No, it's your number one, the preauricular, just in front of the ear, and then the posterior auricular, and then the occipital, then the tonsillar. Remember, no, that if you uh, palpate a tonsillar node that pulsates <clears throat> that is actually the carotid artery. And then, uh, you have to proceed to the submandibular and then the submental. Okay. And proceed to the su superficial cervical and then to the posterior cervical and to the deep cervical chain and lastly the supraclavicular okay so enlargement of the supraclavicular node especially on the left suggests possible metastasis uh, from a thoracic or abdominal uh, malignancy Also, a take, take note of a tender nodes that suggest inflammation, okay? Hard or fixed nodes suggest 
malignancy. Okay, so this is an example of palpating the lymph nodes. Okay, this picture shows uh, the first one. Uh, the examiner palpates the preauricular. And then on the second picture, uh, the examiner is palpating the supraclavicular nodes. Alright, so now let's move on to the physical examination of the trachea and the thyroid gland. So inspect the trachea for any deviation, okay, deviated back to one side, so it should be located in the midline. Okay, you have to feel for any deviation. Kapag nag-deviate yan to uh, other side, possible, there is a growth, uh, there is a mass, possibly, no? Or there is an enlargement of the thyroid gland. The spaces should be symmetric. Inspect the region uh, below the cricoid cartilage for the thyroid gland. Ask the patient to sip uh, water and swallow. Lulupo, and then you have to watch for the thyroid movement. Okay. So this is an example. No? This picture shows an example uh, of the trachea and the thyroid at least. So this is the thyroid cartilage, the cricoid cartilage, and this is the thyroid gland. Okay. So this is normal. And the other picture shows an enlargement of the thyroid. Okay. So you can also observe here that the trachea is located at the midline.
Miguel Nojo. Please again, not to emphasize. The location is at the right or the left. to decrease the likelihood of force. Install a safety features like the side the rails or yung kinahawakan, no? Yung sa CR, meron tayong nilalagay na parang um, tube na yung tayo pwedeng humawa yung ating mga lola at lola. Avoid use of throw rats kasi Remove extensive cords in high traffic areas. Ayan. So, sa mga daanan, baka may nakakalag dyan ng mga cords. Di mga kuryente pa, mga extension wire. Use rails on the stairs. Thank you. 
tokens for babies. Kasi pwede silang umaliktad din doon. No? Lalo na kapag magalang na yung bata. Pwede mo siyang uh, pumalong doon sa kanyang walker. Review medication or medication list with health care provider. Okay, so another part of your health teaching or health promotion. Uh, suggestions to prevent head injuries in motor vehicles. You can instruct the patient or you can give health teaching to use seat belts. Use car seats or booster seats with children. Uh, for the small children, they should sit in the back seat, especially if there is an airbag in front of the passenger seat. Never drive under the influence of alcohol or drugs. Wear helmet when appropriate, especially if riding in motorcycles or ATV, slow mobiles, and no testing when driving. Okay, so these are the suggestions of word injuries from objects. You have to wear helmets when appropriate, especially when uh, doing sports. Right? Place heavy object on the shelves at eye level or lower. Avoid dangerous situations or fights. Lock car arms and store bullets in a separate area. Ayan, kasi ba ang mamaya, madali ko kandungan yan. O may isang mga taong na pumasok dyan at nakikita yun yung car arms. Tapos may balapan. Oh my God. Alright, so finally, we're done with our two topics for this week. Thank you everyone for watching this video. But before I end this presentation, let me read to you, to inspire you, the quotes of Abraham Lincoln. According to him, the best way to predict your future is to create. Okay. God bless you, our future healthcare warrior, our future nurses. Fighting life. Okay? are the references of this presentation. Thank you everyone.